Welcome everyone to Bonifab Custom. Today I'm going to show you how you can modify your old, say, two or three burner uh, forge into a ribbon burner. So you may have one of these naturally aspirated three or two or one burner forges that now you want to make some Damascus or some uh, mosaic Damascus and you need something that's a lot hotter and the heat and the heat is dispersed more evenly. So you want to upgrade to a ribbon burner, but the forge you have is still in great condition. So I'm going to show you today how we're going to modify your old forge to take a ribbon burner. These are one of the ribbon burners. Now you can make one of these ribbon burners, but these are ones that I make uh, production. You can buy them from me through uh, Bonifab Custom. I'm going to show you how you can take one of these newer style ribbon burners that produces a lot more heat than your normally aspirated burner. And we're going to take this and modify this forge to fit it. So in a closer look, this forge is still in great shape. The refractory inside on the bottom is still perfect. The sides are still perfect and the actual case or the outside body of the forge is still in excellent condition. The only thing that took some beating is the top of the forge. The refractory is cracked and we're going to take out these burners. So let's start taking some of the stuff out, start cutting a hole for our new ribbon burner and let's break out the refractory. So I finally got all the refractory out. As you can hear, I'm doing it outside now because of the dust and stuff. But um, it was really, really tough to come out. This thing was uh, pretty well made. I made this thing oh, quite a few years back. So I'm gonna just clean up the rest and then we can start with the inside. So now I have this cutout made and I took all the refractory that was in here before, the one that was supporting the, the uh, burners, the normally aspirated burners, and I'm going to need to make a new uh, form for that refractory cement. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut a piece of 1-8 steel. Now you can use anything really. You can use a piece of wood uh, underneath here that's going to support that refractory on top of here. So I have uh, steel available, so I'm gonna make it out of some 1 8 steel. I'm gonna put it across here, clamp it on here, put some support underneath, and make sure that the refractory is not gonna leak through. the support plate underneath and this is going to give us the ability to pour in the refractory it's going to go over the old refractory on the on the sides here and then it's going to sit on top but instead of pouring refractory and then trying to cut open the inlet for my ribbon burner I'm going to make myself up a template and I'm going to show you how to do that a kind of mold and template so if we take a look at the ribbon burner now this is the one that I make and I sell 
Now, if you're making your own, regardless of um, if you have it tapered or not, I prefer it tapered. It just makes it that much easier to install and, and uh, take out, put in, and replace. And especially when we're molding that top refractory, it's just gonna be so much easier when it's tapered. Now, what I did was to actually make the mold for this, so if I, if I purchased one or made one, after it's done and it is, uh, went through its heat cycle or it's been cured, so after it's been cured, it shrinks. So now this is the time that I want to make the template for me to cast. So for me, what's worked out for me is using some 1 8 sheet metal or some one eighth flat steel material. And I'll put it against the actual um, ribbon burner and I'll fit it in there real nicely against this and I'll weld it. And I'll have something like, so your template or your mold is gonna look something like this. And it is basically one eighth bigger than the refractory ribbon burner. And the reason for that is because there's shrinkage. So when I put this into the top plate or the mold and it cures and I pull this out, over time it's gonna shrink and that tapered ribbon burner is going to fit perfectly inside. We want it to be loose. We don't want it to be, or I don't want it too big so it falls through and I don't want it too tight so it stays up. So what I've find out, found out is that making it with a 1 8 plate around and welding it works out to an excellent shrinkage for my mold. So the top plate's in there. I'm gonna take the mold that I made with a template and I'm basically just gonna sit it on top of there like that. I'm gonna put some weights on top and then I'm gonna mix up some refractory cement and I'm gonna pour it in and nice and easily, I'm gonna be pushing it into the under uh, the parts here. I'm gonna be pushing it underneath this top plate make sure that I get all that refractory pressed in there. And then after it cures, because it's tapered, I can pull it out very easily. So let's mix up some refractory cement. Put some lead weights on top of the mold or the template for it, for the ribbon burner. And I also put some jack screws underneath to support the uh, sheet metal. And you can use anything. You don't need to use jack screws. You can use uh, pieces of wood, shim, whatever, as long as there's support on top of this. Because once we put that, that cement on here, it's pretty heavy. And we don't want it uh, bowing or falling through. So now I'm going to prepare the refractory cement to go inside this uh, cavity here that we made. And I'm using um, a product called Unicast 70. And it's an unbelievable uh, refractory cement. I've used it from uh, pizza ovens to 3000 degree uh, forges. And if you cure it properly and slowly, um, the thing, the stuff does not crack. It doesn't flake off. It is extremely strong. And as you saw when I was taking the refractory out of the top here, I was, you know, smashing it, hammering it, and you're talking, this, this refractory in here is years old, and it still wasn't uh, breaking apart. Uh, it's extremely strong material, and it's, like I said, Unicast 70. So this kind of refractory, I'm gonna mix in this pail. I'm gonna put some in, and I'm gonna start adding water. And as I'm starting to add water, um, I'm gonna look at the look at the texture and the consistency of the refractory. I kind of don't want it too wet 
but I also don't want it dry that it kind of cracks apart. You have to be able to hold it in your hand and make it into a ball and you would bring it from one hand to the next and if it doesn't fall apart, you're at the, good, uh, at the right consistency. So let's make some refractory up and start filling this cavity. Factory is all done. It's just a matter of letting it cure overnight and then we'll take out our mold or template and we'll see how it looks. So it's the next day and it had about six hours to cure. So I'm going to take out this bottom plate and the mold or the template out of uh, this casting. Now, just to take the edge off, these sharp edges, I'm just gonna get a diamond, diamond file and I'm gonna file it down a little bit. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to start bringing up the temperature and I'm, right now I'm just doing it slowly with a small, uh, with a torch, you can see there, and I'll turn it on for a bit and then turn it off and kind of bring it up you know, a couple of hundred degrees at a time. Slowly is the key. temperature thanks again everyone for watching bonifab custom as we modified an old forge if you have any questions about this just leave them in the comments below or i can be contact at, contacted at bonifab custom at gmail.com also if you want to pur purchase one of these or you need some more specifics on how to do it yourself thanks again thanks all for thank you for all your support and don't forget to subscribe.